ओम नमो लोए सर्वत्रिकावर्ती अरियंतानम ओम नमो लोए सर्वत्रिकावर्ती सिद्धानम ओम नमो लोए सर्वत्रिकावर्ती आयरियानम ओम नमो लोए सर्वत्रिकावर्ती ओवज्जायानम ओम नमो लोए सर्वत्रिकावर्ती सावनम ओम कारम बिंदु संयुक्तम नित्यं दायं तीयोगिनम कामदम मोक्षदम चैव ओम काराय नमो नमः नमः समय साराय स्वानु भूत्या चकासते चित सभावाय भावाय सर्व भावान तरचिदे अग्नान तिमिरंदा नमग्नाना अंजन सलाकया चक्षुरुन मिलतम् येना तस्मय स्वीगुरुवे नमः अनंत अनंत भाव बेदधि बरेलि बलि अनंत अनंत नयनिक्षे पे व्याख्यानी चे शकल जगत हित कारिणी हारिणी मोह तारिणी बावा भी मोक्ष चारिणी प्रमाणी चे उपमा आप्यानी जन तमारा खविते व्यर्थ आपवाती निजमती मापाई में मानी चे अहो राज चंद्र बाल ख्याल न थी पामता है जीने स्वरतानी वाणी जानी ते ने जानी चे गुरु राज तानी वाणी जानी ते ने जानी चे ओम नमः शिवाय ओम नमः शिवाय ओम सी सुदात माने नमः जय यंत्र आ टुडे इज अ नवंबर थर्टी एट टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी एंड वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग योर क्लास ऑन अ आत्मसिद्धि शास्त्र वी आर ऑन द सेवन स्टैंड्स ऑफ आत्मसिद्धि शास्त्र एंड वी आर ऑन द टेल पार्ट ऑफ इट एंड होपफुली वील बी फिनिशिंग दैट स्टैंड्स अ टुडे आम Today is a very important day that we should be aware of it. Today is a Sri Madhuracharya Ji's birth anniversary. He was born 153 years back today. He was born in a small little uh, 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 ocean side town called Bawania. And uh, uh, he was born there and uh, he had uh, kind of a very very unique uh, childhood within uh, 3 4 years time he learned everything that he should be learning in the school at 7 years of age he ended up with the uh, knowledge of the previous lives there was a very important event occurred there was a person named uh, uh, Amit Chandbhai living next to him, next to their house. And suddenly, one day, he had a, a snake bite and he ended up dying. So, this little boy, seven-year-old boy, did not understand what is happening. He asked everybody, what happened? What happened? Why are everybody crying? And the, the, his grandfather thought that uh, this little boy will get upset and everything. So they say, oh, go and play somewhere else and don't, don't worry, this and that and everything. But this little boy knew that something is wrong. So he realized that uh, they are taking this body to the crematory. And crematory in India at that time and most of the places, it was a, a, in the outskirt of the town, isolated place where they'll put the logs on the a body on the logs, etc., and then they will burn it out. So this kid goes over hiding quietly behind. He goes, he climbs on a tree, and then he finds out they burned the body. This seven-year-old kid starts thinking a lot. In, in the deep thinking, he ended up with the self. Uh, he ended up with the uh, um, knowledge of the previous lives. And suddenly, he said, "What's the meaning of this life? You're born, you grow up, and you die. No, that's not the meaning. The real meaning for the life is to do something constructive." Constructively to realize one's soul, and he started his journey towards 
uh, enrichment for his soul. At age 16, he ended up writing some of the most important poems. And he also thereafter, he wrote a book called Mokshmala, and you are, uh, you are aware of that Mokshmala book. It's in English also, in, in, in Hindi, Gujarati, etc., all languages. At age of 16, he writes this book with 108 chapters. And after a while, they ran out of the print copy. So the printer comes and says, sir, do you want to make any changes? And this 87, 16 year old kid says, no, whatever is written is a perfect. There is nothing to be subtracted, nothing to be added. That's it. Confidence of this 16 year old kid for his uh, business. Now he comes to Bombay, etc., and everything. And uh, he has uh, so much intellect. It's called Satavdan. Satavdan means he can remember 100 things happening at a given time. 100 things happening at a given time means somebody is singing a song, somebody is playing cards, he is playing cards with somebody, he is playing chess also at the same time, somebody at the same time is ringing the bell and uh, uh, um, uh, the, 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 um, somebody is singing a stanza in a different language and one person gives one line after a few minutes, another person gives another line of the same, the same song, etc. Et and he will remember all these things, 100 things at a time. We just say multitasking. What is multitasking? That is nothing in front of this kind of knowledge. And British saw, saw, saw that, that this guy is very intelligent. Let's take him to London and he will become world famous. And Srimadji says, that's not my aim in my life. Publicity is not my aim. I need to do something for my soul, not for my for mundane, mundane existence publicity. So he gives up this uh, uh, the intellectual capacity to remember 100 things at a time. He also became the mentor for the Mahatma Gandhiji. Gandhi, after coming from South Africa, was kind of in doldrum and he wanted to convert to Christianity and or Muslim, Islam. And Simaji gave him the insight of the religion. And Gandhiji became so impressed that Gandhiji said that he's my guru. This is 22 year old kid. 21 year old kid, Gandhiji and they both were in the same age, basically. Now, at 20, age, age 24, he obtains right, right faith, some magnesium. And at age, age 34, tender age of 34, he just ends up losing his life. But in this short life, he did tremendous amount of work, literally work, amazing amount of poems that he wrote down and so many letters that he wrote down of the spirituality that all those letters are collectively are in the book called Srimad Chandra and all those letters are over here. And that is kind of a Bible for Jains basically. Tremendous amount of information spiritual information. And because he was so intellectual person, but he knew that he has a short life. So he did not have time to analyze all the things he wrote down. But later on, after his uh, passing away, Gurudev Sri Kanji Swami came and he just dissected those letters, etc. And thereafter, Srimadji became very popular all over the country and internationally. Srimadji's best, best creation was Atma Siddhi Sastra, which we are talking right now. And we are, we are done for, we are doing for last two, three months, 
and we just have just touched the seven stanza only. It is so deep, deep, deep meaning that is there. And this that this kind of person, he has just revolutionized for us. We are extremely fortunate that we have his teachings available. And through those learning of those teaching, we can also walk on the path that he walked on it and obtain some negation. That is our intense internal desire to obtain such things. So having giving this give, giving that kind of homage to Srimadji, let's come, let's come back to our stanza that we are on. We are on the seven stanza. So let me bring the stanza and then we'll talk from wherever we were left out last time. So this stanza says, basically, let, let's play this stanza. I'll, I'll play this stanza. Srimadji is very nicely tells us over here that a uh, uh, renunciation and uh, indifference to the worldly life. Tyag means renunciation. Virag means indifference to the worldly life. If that is not your basis to start with, if you are not having renunciation a type of a thought process and lifestyle and, and indifference to the worldly life, that kind of attitude when one does not have it, then he is not going to get any spiritual inclination, spiritual knowledge. But furthermore, he said, but if somebody gets stuck in the Tyag and Virag, somebody gets stuck in that uh, uh, renunciation only and indifference to the world thing only and do not progress further, then he will not get experiencing of his soul. So two stages, it says, First thing to have a knowledge and second line shows about the uh, yeah, experiencing of the soul. So knowledge is a very first one. Once you have right knowledge and again, right knowledge you can only obtain when you have some indifference to the worldly affair and something like renunciation type of thing. Once you have that kind of attitude, then you have the right knowledge. You know, let, let's presume one thing. If I'm angry right now and I'm trying to read the scripture, I cannot concentrate. But I'm at peace of mind. I have a good night race. Early morning I wake up when everything is quiet. I'm fresh and everything. I don't have any uh, bah, 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 train of thoughts running unnecessarily and everything. And I do the scripture reading. The, the, the receptivity is extremely good. But to have that knowledge and then to apply that knowledge to go into the experiencing of the soul, then and then it's important. Having said that, because Simaji is explaining to us so many things and we are, we are talking all those things for the last few weeks. So here, let me just bring the slide which are supposed to come to. Huh, it was just like 38. So what it says over here, uh, wait, uh, did I bring him these slides? No, I don't need to have him these slides, sorry. Hmm. Okay, yes, here it is. So it says over here, 
self-willed nature. He uses some simple word. It just word is called swachan. Gujarati word is called swachan. Swa means self, and chan means to behave. My I behave with my own self. Whatever I presume right, I just keep on doing that. Why I act I act accordingly, whether it's right or wrong, I don't know. But I just do it. Whatever comes in my mind. So that's called self-will person. Now, when you, he's using that simple words, what does it mean? It means that one has faith deluding state means darshan mo. This is the technical word. Faith deluding state means my faith to the right faith to the eternal soul substance, that kind of faith is deluded. It's dirty. It's got messed up. My faith, which is supposed to, for example, if I give you two edible white powder and I just say, Shefali, tell me what these two powders are. Right away, you taste it and you say affirmatively, this is sugar and affirmatively, this is salt. How come did you say that? Because it has a sweet, a sweet taste, has to be sugar. Salty taste has to be salt. Means sugar cannot, cannot be there without any sweetness any time in the entire existence of sugar. Wherever it is, whenever it is. It is innate nature. My innate nature is to remain in the in the innate state of the soul, to remain in the all knower soul's nature. But instead, instead, I am having my faith directed to the outside object and the closest outside object I have is a physical body. So I get engrossed into my physical body and I just think that this is my, my entire existence is physical body only. And that's why I try to do everything for this physical body. Keep it in a, in a nice shape and everything, give proper food and everything, if the, and all kind of things. Because body is me, body is me, body is me. That kind of attitude I have created since time infinite and that's my problem. And that is called faith deluding state. My faith, just like the sh uh, sugar giving sweetness, I'm supposed to be the all know soul substance that's in, in eternal nature. I have to be engrossed there. Instead, I'm in a deluding state. So my faith is deluding. And that is called self will nature or swachan. So simple word swachan or just whatever comes in my mind, I do it. Why do you have to worry about it? And that kind of argument I make with the other people. And I justify my behavior. Well, alcohol gives me relaxation. So what's wrong if I'm taking it? Go for it. Well, eating meat and I'm just getting a nutrition. Go for it. If you think it's, it's, it's the best thing you are doing, go on, because that's your self-will nature. And that's a faith deluding state. Forget about those extreme examples. Physical body, this is me, this is me, this is me. That kind of attitude I have, that itself is a faith deluding state. Darshan mo. And because of that thing, I'm, tra I'm transmigrating since time infinite in this worldly affair. The second word he used, obstacle or pratibandh. Obstacle or pratibandh means it's a conduct related deluding state. This was a faith deluding state. This is conduct deluding state or called charitramo. Darshan mo, charitramo combined together is called mo. Faith deluding state, conduct deluding state combined together is called deluding state. So deluding state is two major factors. 
faith deluding and conduct deluding when you end up with the samyak darshan when you end up with the experiencing of the soul that means you have won over this situation then there is a there is some some impurities in the conduct related states are there gradually starts going away and that's called uh, uh, conduct related deluding state and we'll be talking this more as as we are progressing into the further stanzas in the future giving the two definitions such type of altered inclination is not my true nature i have to understand that these are not my true nature so a faith deluding state is not my true nature the conduct deluding state is my true nature not my true nature i am separate from the body and also separate from the influence of attachment etc state of all such alien object in the sense body is not mine even though i am associated with the body but body and soul are distinct entity they both end up doing their own work so i am not the physical body i am not the inclination of attachment means rag or dwe state i am the eternal soul myself i am a pure and powerful soul substance such type of determination occurs due to constant reminder to the self who am i who am i who am i is it not a kind of a uh, funny thing i am the true nature of the self and i have to remind myself that i am a true nature i am the true self i am the true the sachin has to get up in the morning to look at the mirror and say hey remember you are sachin today you don't have to worry about it don't forget about it or i am the cephali i have to remember the whole day i am cephali do you have to do that your own self you have conviction that you are the whole oh, oh, your own self you don't need to remember conviction is constantly going on when you are driving when you are eating when you are taking when you are taking shower when you are walking running ex exercising every time conviction that i am cephali i am sachin i am kiri that kind of conviction is going on and here such a determination occurs due to constant do i to remind myself that i am the soul i am the eternal soul i am the eternal soul i am the eternal soul that's my nature how can I? it's so funny that my own self i have to remember myself and this physical body no it's just there always there there's nothing to worry about it no i have forgotten myself also ends up knowing that material karma type of impurity is not my true nature so constant reminder that i am the pure soul and as karma association and body association are not my true nature such soul tries to remove all impurities from within once one decides this way remember in this in this trans i said first you don't have knowledge and then to have had the faith so all these things are saying knowledge 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 no what's the true thing what's the right thing what's the wrong thing and all the thing once once i know it then i try to remove all those altered state from me that's a crux of this stanza blind ritualist one who is only believing rituals only he believes that uh, i can perform body's activity i can keep my body slim i can i can if i i can eat, i can uh, um, 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 control my diabetes i can do this i can do that i can uh, 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 run marathon etc these are i'm performing body's activity fasting or eating state he has ego for that i can eat 10 pizza at a time all right okay go for it what a big deal about it or i can do fasting for day two day three days four days whatever i can do fasting and he has ego for such type of thing this bodily activity and he has ego on that one he does not have you know milder form of passion means such type of person who has a ego for example let's say fasting only yeah, i can do fasting 
I can do two days of fasting, one week of fasting, two weeks of fasting, one month of fasting, but so what? Your physical body did not get the food. So what? what how does it help to your soul? The neighbor is going to eat the food and here I feel satisfied. Is it, is it possible? Your neighbor is eating a food and over here you are getting satisfaction. That, that my stomach is full. Is it possible? This neighbor is eating the food and here I feel satisfied. How strange it is. So when I have ego, I can do fasting so much, this and that, everything. So even with that kind of ego, I have not reduced my toxic emotions. Anger, deceit, ego, greeds are not reduced. In fact, they have increased. I did the fasting. Oh, my community is just respecting me. They have a big function for me and this and that. So you are looking for those kind of, and I keep on singing these virtues forever and ever and ever. Once upon a time, I did this, I did that, I did that and everything. So what? It gives you, satisfies your ego. That means you don't even have a milder form of passion when you are a blind ritualist. As we said over here, fasting thing before we mention in this winter time, snakes and squirrel, etc., animals, they go in hibernation. In the fall time, they start eating as much as possible. Their weight becomes almost double and they go hibernation in winter time. They, they go underground and reduce their body metabolism and heart rate, etc. And they can survive for six months underground without eating, without drinking water. So springtime when they come out, we should go and celebrate their homecoming. That my God, you did six months of fasting and especially without eating and drinking water also. So they are the greatest of the great people, right? Great, great living being. No, because that's so, so fasting and or, or eating state that gives ego and that means even you don't have milder form of toxic emotion at the time without even reducing anger etc state and attachment towards the body there is not even auspicious influence in patient when i have the fasting and when i do the ego etc that means i did not have even auspicious inclination I was, I, 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 I know so many people when they do fasting, now they, they, they have to eat to drink the boiled water. And when they do boiled water drinking, their stomach resents and they have nausea and vomiting, etc., etc., etc. And they remain frustrated for that particular day. Is that the reason you are doing fasting to become frustrated? Anger, deceit, ego, greed, you want to do that way? No. So even you don't get even auspicious inclination when you don't understand why you are doing all those things. If the aim is to achieve the eternal state of the soul and having the milder form of toxic emotion, then the renunciation, etc. states are called to be helpful in obtaining right faith. It's a loaded statement over here. <clears throat> First thing, what's your aim here? My achieving the eternal state. That's my aim right now. When that is my aim, then my toxic emotion, anger, deceit, ego, greed, they become milder. I don't have ego. I don't, I'm not, I don't become angry. I don't have greed. At that time, this is the true state. I, I, I want to achieve the right faith. So these are the way I start. And then I have the renunciation, etc. attitude within me. Uh, 
uh, and uh, I have the um, um, uh, indifference to the worldly affair. Who cares who won the uh, elections or not? When he's doing, when he's in that state, he doesn't care about it. So the renunciation, etc., state are called helpful in obtaining right faith. So those are that renunciation state will be helpful to obtain right faith. But again, again, remember, I'm doing total inauspiciousness right now. Now I'm doing some activities to of religious activities to achieve my is above eternal state. My aim is to achieve the eternal state. Then my renunciation, etc., states are helpful. But only having auspicious inclinations without experiencing self is not a religious act. I did 30 days of fasting. I did so many samaik. I did so much pratikaman. I gave so much donation. I so much compassion towards the living object. Those are all auspicious inclinations. But if that does not end up with the self-experiencing, then they are not called religious acts. Because in the past, you have done such type of thing infinite times, infinite times. But nothing happened because it was only auspicious inclination and the aim was not the eternal state. Aim is to the eternal self. And that's why associated milder form of toxic emotions and he performs the act and not considering such an act as religion, they say to be means to obtain right faith. Now, you are on the path to obtain self-realization. On the path, on the path to obtain self-realization, you are end up doing such religious activities. But you don't pay attention to that one. For example, let's say you are going out to work tomorrow morning. You have to take the highway five, north or south, whatever. And your aim is to go to certain exit. In between, while you are just driving, several other exit signs are coming. You just saw it, but you don't, didn't pay much attention to that. You just look for that orange thought exit period. So all this in between stops are coming. You don't pay attention to that one. You're going in a subway train and so many stations are coming. Your final aim is your station. Is the rest of the station, you just see them. You don't get involved with them. You don't get engrossed with them. One time I was coming from the Philadelphia to New York. And that's the first time I was in the train there, three, four, five years back. A big station came in. Everybody started dropping out. And I said, oh my God, is it my station? Is it my station? Or what, what is happening? The whole, whole train is almost empty. I looked around, and it was Newark. Philadelphia to Newark. And from there, a lot more other people joined. And then finally, my, so what I'm trying to say, you don't pay attention to the in-between activities or in-between stops coming. The, 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 the milder form of toxic emotions are occurring in the middle stop. But that is not the religion. That's what I believe. My aim is an eternal soul substance. My aim is to obtain right faith. Then this type of in-between stops can be helpful to take you to the final uh, emancipation. So here two things are saying. 
alone or species inclination, they are useless. And if you just say that, that auspicious inclinations are religious act, that's bad, that's wrong, wrong. But my aim is an eternal soul substance experiencing and on the way, this milder form of toxic emotions are coming, but they are not my true form. Understanding that way, you continue going and you obtain right faith. You want to make million dollar tomorrow. That's your aim to make million dollar. You made hundred thousand dollar right now. Good, it's there, but you don't pay much attention in the sense you don't get stuck there. You just say, "Hey, that's not my aim. My aim is ten times more. Let's con let's continue doing it." So that hundred thousand dollar you don't consider as important in compared to the million dollar. Then it's right thing. Omniscient Lord has shown the path of logical. Re now there is suddenly a new chapter coming, and this new chapter is a very interesting chapter. And we will talk a little bit. And uh, you know, I'll try to explain to you as simple as possible. If you don't understand if some of the things, if I have gone a little bit detailed, and if you don't make it, don't worry about it. Simple thing, what it means, and uh, you'll understand what it try, what I try to say. So next thirty minutes, we'll talk about it. So omniscient Lord has shown the path of logical reasoning means nyai. Nyai is a word that we are going to dealing with next next few slides, which is called logical reasoning. Omniscient Lord has shown the path of logical reason with a multiplicity point of view. Multiplicity point of view means anekant. Anekant nyai sathe hoy shi. What is that nyai? What is anekant? Let's dissect those words. It says that soul is eternal, non-doer, all-knower, without any action, pure, without any auspicious inclination or, or, or auspicious or, or inauspicious inclination. This is the real nature of the soul. Eternal soul is a non-doer, is not doing anything. It's just eternally present. And there is no presence of any auspicious or inauspicious inclination there. Now, to obtain experiencing of the such soul, One has to know comprehensive knowledge and partial point of view. First thing, I want to go to this soul, this kind of soul I want to experience. So first I have to know, knowing, knowing, knowing is very important. So I have to know comprehensively what's a whole structure and function of the soul is, what's a partial point of view, etc., etc. All those things I have to know, and especially I have to take the help of my learned guru, my, my spiritual guru, my enlightened monks, my, my enlightened teachers like Guru Devsi Kanji Swami. So we have to take their help, and I'll be able to understand my real nature. Self will nature, the guy who just he just behaves whatever comes in my mind, self will nature. With ignorance, he cannot obtain real nature of the soul. So I have to understand the real, real nitty gritty thing of comprehensive perspective and a partial point of view. Comprehensive perspective, that's what the exercises we are doing right now. Who am I? What's my nature? How come I'm the soul? What happens in the soul? What's the structure? What's the function? What's the anatomy? What's the physiology? All those things, I know it. I know with the help of my guru. And that means I, I'm, 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 able to, I'm, I'm able to understand that nature of the soul. But if I'm self-willed nurture with the ignorance, I'll never make it. So logical reason with a multiple point of view Anekan Swarup Nyai Vidhi. This is a new chapter. We will try to make it actually, it's a whole I mean, a separate part of the philosophy. It's a very, very detailed, great, great, great details are there. 
we are just going to go superfluously. So some, some, we will just do the passing remark and everything. And if you have interest and if you want to know this more about it, we will do it someday. I can do it, but at the same time, I want to understand, I want to make sure that you understand, you grab it because essence is more important. So logical reasoning with multiplicity point of view. Logical reasoning means nyai. This is means nyai. Multiplicity point of view means anekant. Anekant swarup nyai vidhi. What's the nature of this logical reasoning? That's what we are going to talk next few slides. What's the first thing we have to understand? Multiplicity point of view, and then we'll come back to logic reasoning. So what's a multiplicity point of view? It's a root of the Jain philosophy. When you go into the, the pillar of the Jain philosophy, the three main pillar on which Jainism is standing, multiplicity point of view, anekan, non-violence, anekan, and non-violence is a, gosh, no. uh, ahimsa, and aparigra means non-possession. Non-possession, non-violence, multiplicity point of view, anekant, aparigraha, ane ahimsa. Those three pillar Jainism is standing on it. So this, this has to be understood. It is it's imperative for any Jain student to know all these three things. We know something about non-violence. We know something about non person What is this multiplicity point of view? It's a root of the Jain philosophy. Anekant means one substance, many attributes residing. A, a, a given substance, a given substance, multiple, multiple things are residing within. For example, uh, let's take the sugar. What's the attributes of the sugar? Sugar is an infinite attributes out of which we know few of them. Sugar is a shiny power, shiny substance. It's a white substance. It's a, I mean, a sweet substance, etc., etc., etc. So many attributes are there. Gold is a heavy in nature. It's yellow in color. It's malleable in nature, and etc., etc. All infinite attributes are there. Similarly, soul has an infinite attributes. Soul has a knowledge attribute, soul has a perception attribute, soul has a faith attribute, soul is a conduct attribute, soul has a bliss attribute, etc., 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 etc. So each one, each attribute is called anekan. Anekan means anek, ant. Anek means many, ant means attributes. Many attributes. That's a standard definition of a, a multiplicity point of view. But that's not the one we are going to talk about. We are going to talk very important one. This third bullet, it says at a given time, two opposite things residing in each substance. There are two opposite things having operational activity at the same time in a given substance. That's called an account. That's called multiplicity point of view. Two exactly opposite things operational at a given time in a given substance that is called multiplicity point of view. We will explain what it means. At a given time, two opposite things, two opposite things are there. They are also operational. For example, eternity and transiency. There are two exact opposite things are present in a given substance at a given time. While soul is eternal, at the same time, soul is transient. You know, the, the other philosophies, non-Jain philosophies, they didn't understand. They say, you guys are nuts. How can you be permanent and eat a, how can you be eternity and transient together? Either you are eternal or you are transient. There is nothing like two things together. Jain says, because you don't understand Anekant principle. 
multiple multiple uh, multiple point of view principle a soul from a substance perspective is eternal in nature at the same time in the same soul transiently modes are occurring at a given time and then they destroy then second mode arises that get destroyed and so on and so forth for time infinite that continues and will continue forever in the future so transiency from modal perspective eternity from the substance perspective and both are operational together in a given so and that is called anekan most of the time and this definition uh, you have to remember you have to remember because if you if we don't understand that part then whole jain philosophy cannot be understood two exact opposite thing residing at the same time is a multiplicity point of view most of the time if you just hear and this is true in a in a in a older generation like mine what they will say well i'm listening something from here something from here something from here something from here everywhere there is good i accept that's a anekant not true that's not called anekant anekant multiplicity point of view means in a given substance at a given time two opposite things are operational that is called multiplicity point of view one and many transiency and permanency all those things they are called anekan so there is only one substance present and two opposite things residing within that substance one many eternal soul substance from substance perspective is one but from attribute perspective there are infinite attributes within so one and many transient uh, i mean eternal transient such opposite things are residing at a given substance in a given time so a pair of opposite things residing in a given substance is multiplicity point of view anekan anekan bhi ekant as a nij atma ki prapti ke siwa bina anya koi hetu upkar nahi hai this sentence from uh, shrimad rachandra ji vachanamrut patrang 702 this is so powerful sentence that he has given so powerful sentence that it can be you can talk for 2 3 4 5 hours easily on this sentence we are not going to do that right now don't get don't worry about it but so it, so what it says aneka and multiple point of be useful only when one has narrow vision of obtaining eternal self as the aim when i am making aim to the eternal soul substance that's my aim right now then and then this multiplicity point of view is useful otherwise it is not useful at all but some later date we'll talk a lot more about it right now let's put it that way here okay i have to go a lot more thing i have to go what's a dialectic relativism now when you just say anekan then you have to talk about shyadvad shyadvad and anekan they go hand in hand shyadvad is called relative uh, i mean dialectic relativism means a spoken words let's put it the simple word spoken word so what's a what's a dialect what's a shyadvad the spoken language about one, about the nature of the multi nature of the multiplicity point of view i can just describe this is the phone this is a iphone it is a cover over here it is a protective cover shield over here and and all those multiple things to speak to speak to speak that's called dialectic relativism shyadvad vad means to speak shyadvad so the anekant is a nature of a thing 
I am the soul. I have eternity within and I have a transiency within at the same time. That's a nature. Now when I'm talking about that nature, when I'm talking, 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 that is called dialectic relativism or Shadwar. It's not possible to describe given thing at a, a given thing at a given moment. You cannot describe one thing completely. You need to take a sentences, but at a given time you can't describe both the things. For example, I'm a man, one sentence, and I'm not a woman. Means my manliness becomes stronger. But I have to make two sentences. I'm a man and I'm not a woman. But, but, when I'm a man, at the same time, I'm not a woman. Both the things are together, but spoken word can be said in a sequence only. That's a limitation of the spoken words. Limitation of the spoken words. So that's why we have to speak in a, in a, in a, a sequence only. There is a limitation of spoken language. Therefore, a given, uh, therefore, at a given point, a, a given point is made primary and the rest may, may made secondary. Means, I'm a father, I'm a son, I'm a grandfather, I'm a grandson, I'm a nephew, I'm an uncle, I'm a brother, I'm a, whatever, whatever. So multiple facets are present within me. Now, when I am talking about my son Rishi, then my fatherhood comes in the picture. That means I as a dad did such, such and such and such and such thing, whatever. At the time, my all other existences, they become secondary. When I'm talking, when I'm talking in Rishi's perspective, I'm talking as a father, means I'm not talking about son, I'm not talking about grandson or grandfather or uncle or nephew or whatever, whatever my, my existences are there. Only one thing is made primary and rest of the things, the rest of the things are made secondary. And that's called dialectic relativism. While making one thing primary, the listener knows about the rest of the thing which are made secondary. When I'm talking to you, I have, I'm talking to Rishi, I'm his father and everything. When I'm making that sentence about my fatherhood, you already know that I'm also, my, I'm the son also, I'm the husband also, I'm the brother also, I'm the nephew also, I'm the uncle also, etc., 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 etc. So listener also knows and speaker also knows what is made primary, what is made secondary. And therefore, in the spoken words, there is use of the word from certain perspective, means siyad. From certain perspective, I'm father. From certain perspective, I'm son. From certain perspective, I'm grandpa. From certain perspective, I'm grandchild, etc., etc., etc. So in dialectic relativism, in Syadvad, we are going to use the word from certain perspective. I am father only. No, I am father too. Only will not be used. It will be because from certain certain perspective, from my kid's perspective, I'm father. That's it. So that's what relativism is there. So from Anekant, we came to Syadvad. So now we know what Syadvad is. Now let's go. What's known as Nya, now we are coming to that Nyai, that word Nyai means logical reasoning. What does it mean? It means by which one has the right knowledge of a given subject or object. This is an iPhone. So this is right knowledge I have. But that's a, for explanation. For, I am the eternal soul to know my true nature. Who am I? 
What's my existence for? And all those things to know, that's called right knowledge. And that's called nyai. Knowing, and, or knowing of an object occurs with comprehensive knowledge and partial point of view. Don't worry about it. Means I know a subject completely, period. Therefore, nyai is called praman nyai swarup. It, again, that I think we can. Don't, this is too much detail about it. So basically, what logical reasoning nyai means to know a given substance in appropriate way. The, now, this is little Sanskrit comes over here, and if you don't understand, don't worry about it, because Sanskrit is a mother of all the languages. If you really, really want to become a linguistic person, one has to know the Sanskrit because there are more than two billion, with the B, billion plus words in Sanskrit language. In contrast, English language in a few centuries back, they had a few hundred words were there. So now you can imagine amazing, amazing language. So word nyai, there is a there is a uh, 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 dictionary word. There is a root word is an ni. Ni means, means a verb. Ni is a verb. From the verb, the word is coming out. Ni plus I means nyai. Ni means to take it, and I means knowledge. To, 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 to bring the knowledge, to, with the knowledge, understanding of a given object, that's called nyai. To take it to logical conclusion, that's a nyai. To take the knowledge into the given object, that means to know a, to, to know a given object properly is called nyai. To know an object properly is called nyai. At a given time, a right knowledge to be present is known as nyai. And nyai brings bliss and removes misery. So basically, these are the things. And again, again, this is not the, the, the this is, we, we just sidetracked from our main uh, our stanza. Our main stanza was, do you have knowledge? And that knowledge only occurs when you have some renunciation nature and apathy towards the worldly object. When you have that kind of a, a, a attitude within you, then you are the prime person to accept knowledge. Once you obtain knowledge, don't get stuck it's only halfway, it's only comma. Now we have to go to the full stop. And that means now from this knowledge, I have to go for experiencing the soul substance. When I do that, that's a real thing. So over here, we are finishing this seven stanza this way. Next time we'll start eight stanza. It's very important. Eight stanza is very nice, very good. So on, on, up until now, Srimadji has built up all our baseline principles that, that who am I, what's my nature, why I don't get the knowledge, etc., etc. So when the, he discovered dry knowledgeable person and also described about the, uh, the, the, the blind ritualist. And now he's going to take us to nitty gritty thing next thing onwards. Okay. Any questions so far? Yes, anything? Okay. All right. Okay, then we can be closing, okay? Nisvarupa samaja vina pamyo dukha anan samaja yute padanamu si sadaguru bhagavan Parama Purusha Prabhu Sada Guru Padama Jnana Sukhada Jene Atu Bhanani Stene Sada Pranam Deha Chata Jene Dasha Varate Dehati 
Hey, Indra. Thank you, Kirit Bhai. Thank you. Jay Jinendra Uncle, thank you. Thank you. Bye.